In this video, we will make an image carousel and animate it so that it responds to our input in Storyline. Now, what is an image carousel? It's a user interface element that helps us display multiple pieces of content within a limited space like we have here on our slide. We will first make this carousel by using motion paths and Storyline triggers. And then we will explore how we can move it with GSAP and JavaScript. This is something I covered in my intro to GSAP for Storyline video. And now we will be doing a deeper dive and showing how we can clamp the movement of that carousel or just new ways of displaying the interaction. So we'll start off by grouping our images we want to include in our carousel. Then click on the group and add a motion path. This motion path should be a line that moves to the right. I'm going to set its duration to 0.25 seconds and click on the path options and leave the speed at medium. I'm going to leave the ease to in and out and just click on this relative start point menu item. This will make it so that each time I press the button, the movement of the motion path will start from the previous position the path moved to. So if I move it like this, the next time I press the button, the carousel will continue moving in this direction from this point. And since the motion path will move our carousel to the right when we press our back button here, I'm going to rename the motion path to left button. I will actually change the duration for each path to 0.5 seconds and set the speed to slow. So we have a nicer and slower movement. Now I'm going to edit this trigger that was automatically created and uh, set the carousel to move on the motion path when the back button is pressed. Good. Now let's connect a motion path to the forward button as well. We are going to click our carousel group, add a motion path and make it a path that moves in a straight line to the left for an equal dis distance as the other one set its duration to 0.25 seconds and click on the path options to select the relative start point for this one as well. I renamed this motion path to right button and edited the trigger so that the carousel moves on the path when the forward button is pressed. And we're now halfway through. That's because we need to limit the movement of the image carousel. As it stands now, a user can keep clicking on this forward button and send our carousel into oblivion. And we don't want that. Uh, so one way of preventing this will be to hide our forward button when the user is about to go beyond the last image in the carousel and to hide our back button when the user is to, about to go beyond the first image. So how can we do that? I will create two rectangle shapes. I will place one on the left edge of the screen and place the other on the right edge of the screen. I rename the left one to left edge and the right one to right edge. I also need to create another shape which will span the full length of our image carousel. I added this to the group by selecting the shape, hitting Ctrl C, and then selecting a picture inside the group and hitting Ctrl V. If you don't do this, the gaps between the pictures will cause our buttons to disappear later on. Okay, with all the shapes created, I can now add the triggers. I want it so that when the carousel stops intersecting with the right edge, the state of the forward button will be set to hidden. Because if the carousel stops intersecting with the right edge, it means that we've moved it too far forward. And then when it begins to intersect again, I want to set the state of the forward button to normal. And I'm going to do the same thing for the left edge. When the carousel stops intersecting the left edge, I'm going to set the state of the back button to hidden. 
and set the state to normal again when the carousel intersects with the left edge. And that's it. If we publish our project, you can see that our animation works as intended. And we did this using only storyline triggers and motion paths. So when we created this uh, carousel with GSAP in my introduction to GSAP video, I mentioned that if I press the back button, the carousel would go way off screen to the left. And the same happens when I press the forward button. So if I keep pressing the forward button, the carousel moves way off to the right. So we don't want our users to be able to do that. So we could try implementing the system where we clamp this movement using shapes and checking if the group intersects them and checking when the group intersection ends, like we did uh, previously. But this sadly does not work when we are moving the carousel with GSAP. I tried different approaches to this, but couldn't figure it out. Intersecting doesn't work. I also tried it for the interaction where my satellite follows my mouse uh, which I did in my other video, and try to get the state of the Earth to change when the satellite intersects it. And that didn't work either. So we can't rely on intersection when we're moving with GSAP. I don't know why exactly. Maybe it's the properties we use to actually move the object. What I did found was um, by looking at the console while uh, running the animations, uh, is that uh, when moving with GSAP, we affect the translate 3D property of an object. However, when moving uh, using motion paths, a different property changes, uh, the translate matrix, as you see here. Since this goes over my head a bit, I left it at that for now. So I said one solution would be to clamp the movement of the carousel so that once it reaches a certain point, even if we press the button, it won't move. So it won't register the movement of the carousel. So how do we actually do that? Well, first, let's find out what position our carousel is actually in. So to do that, we will need to... I'm going to edit the forward button here. And I'm going to actually do this, change this from X to X percent. So we're going to register the movement in X percent. And I'm going to write it like this. So X percent equals, let's just move it by 10 in each direction. And I'm going to invert the movement here by changing this to a minus. And we're going to do the same for the back button. So X percent here and change this to a plus. So now that we are moving in X percent, um, it will be easier for us uh, moving forward because we will work with uh, smaller numbers rather than having 100, 200 uh, if we were using just X. So now I'm going to make some space here and declare a variable called current X. This will tell us what the current position on the X axis is. And I'm going to use the get property function of GSAP in order to get the X percent property of the animation target. Now, if you were using X here, you would get the X, so only the X. I'm getting the X percent since that's what I'm using to get the uh, to move the carousel around. Now, this is a GSAP function that allows us to get any property we want. For example, I could get the rotation here. I could get the opacity. I can get every property of this item. But I'm going to settle for X% percent right now. And I'm going to log an X% percent at a console.log function, which will log the current X value before the animation starts. OK, then I'm going to copy this. And after my X percent here, I'm going to put a comma and write a an uncomplete function like this. So this will run after the animation here will complete. 
and I'm going to paste my console log here. And before it, I'm going to say that current x equals, and I'm going to pay, copy this right here and paste it. So here's what we are doing with our code right now. We are selecting our carousel, which is called group one for the accessibility text. We are getting the X percent property, which we are using to animate the movement of the carousel. We are sending a console log message to tell us what the current X of the carousel is before the animation starts. We are animating the carousel. And when the animation completes, I am changing the current X to the new current X position. So what I'm doing here is asking the player to get the X percent after our animation has completed and store it in our current X uh, variable. And then we are just printing a console log that says what the current X is when the animation completes. Okay, I'm going to just copy this and paste it into my trigger for the forward button. And here I'm going to click on inspect once I publish and go to the console window. Now, when I press the forward button, I should have two messages here. One say stating that uh, our current X is a certain value before the animation starts and one value for the current X after the animation completes. There we go. So before the animation starts, the value of the X percent is zero. And once the animation completes is minus 10, which is exactly what we are doing with our code here, where we are affecting the X percent by minus 10. If I do it again, I can see that the value changes to minus 20 after the animation completes. I can press forward a bunch of times. And I can see that right around this point, the value of the X percent is 46, let's say. I have to change this trigger for my back button as well. But let's do it again. So I'm pressing the forward button a bunch of, a bunch of times. And right around here, uh, this value is minus 38. So let's say minus 40 is where we want our carousel to stop animating. So what we can do now is go back to our code and right under here, I can declare a variable called forward limit and I'm going to set it to minus 40. And here I want to wrap this animation in an if statement like this. So if parentheses and I'm going to place some squiggly brackets. So inside the parentheses, I'm going to say this. If my current X is smaller than our forward limit, or not smaller, I'm sorry, it's it should be greater because when I move it to, towards the right here, I can see that the number of the X, X percent decreases. So while this is greater than 40 in this range, I can execute the movement. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to copy this entire code into the if statement, delete it from here. OK, so right now we are checking if our current X is larger than our forward limit and only then we can execute the animation. If it's not, this part right here will not execute. So we can press our forward button, but the carousel will not move. Let's actually copy this, paste it into our forward trigger. And when I publish this, I can press forward all I want. But after I reached this point, the image doesn't move forward anymore. So if I inspect this and go to the console, it's because the value is 45, which is uh, greater than, uh, which is uh, smaller than our limit of 40. So it will not move. So we're going to do the same for when the back button is pressed. First off, I'm going to copy everything right here and paste it inside. But we want to call this variable back limit. And we shall see. Uh, we'll leave it as this for now. We'll leave it as it is for now, but we shall um, 
see what the limit we actually need to do. And we're gonna remove the code from this if statement. So I'm gonna control X and paste it right before it. I'm just gonna leave it here, but not copy it into my execute JavaScript trigger. And this should be, we should check against the back limit. If it's smaller, there we go. And here we should also have before copying, we should have a plus equals 10 since we are moving it in the opposite direction. Copy it into my button back trigger. And once I publish this, the carousel moves as we want. And I can see that our limit here is uh, around 35. So we're gonna just input 35 for our back limit like this. And here we are gonna copy this into our if statement, which will check if the current X is basically smaller than 35, like we see here. And then we can execute our back movement. So I'm gonna copy all of this into my execute JavaScript for the button back, publish it. And once I publish the project, I can press the forward button and it will not move up to this point. You could, of course, adjust this to, so it can better suit your needs. And I can move back. And even though I'm pressing the back button as hard as I can right now, the carousel will not move past this point, which is our limit of 35. So look at how great this works. We can just control our entire carousel with this if statement where we are checking against the two limits. Or check this out. You could control the position of your image carousel by hovering over these indicators like a tabbed interaction. Here's how I did it. I created a number variable in Storyline called current image hover. I created some triggers and tied them to my buttons as follows. When the user hovers over the first button, the value of current image hover changes to one. When the user have hovers over the second button, the value changes to two. When the user hovers over the third button, the value changes to three. When the user hovers over the fourth button, the value changes to four. And when the user hovers over the fifth button, the value changes to five. I then created an execute JavaScript trigger that will run when the variable current image hover changes. Inside this trigger, I have the following code. I select my carousel by its accessibility name so I can animate it with GSAP. I select my player and get the current image hover variable. I declare a variable called exposition, which we will use to sort the exposition for each of the five states of our animation. I'll go to Storyline next and move my carousel into each of the five position states and make a note of the approximate X value the carousel is in. Then I created a switch based on the value of the current image hover variable. A switch is like an if statement. It's like having a train and the switch decides on which track the train should go. If our current image hover value is 1, it would go on the first track, case 1. Here, X position will become 340, since this is the X value for when our first image is in the center of the screen. Then I will use GSAP to animate the carousel to the X position. Then, if the value of current image hover is 2, we will move on to case 2 and do the same thing. And I repeat the process for each of the other cases. And now if I publish, the carousel moves depending on which button I hover over. Look at that. This looks amazing. I might need to go back to the code and uh, adjust some of the values of the X position. But all in all, I'm very pleased with how this, uh, with how this turned out.